What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on part two of our camper build series. Uh, real quick, I apologize that I kind of have, I haven't really released a video in a, quite a few weeks now. Um, just with the holidays, uh, we were busy and then I actually went on a snowboarding trip and got a little bit banged up. So I was kind of on the mend a little while after that. So, but we are back today. And the first thing I want to tackle is getting our roof kind of reinforced and finish insulating it. And then I actually want to get our roof vent installed. I ordered a whole bunch of stuff. I got a refrigerator, stove, a bunch of electrical stuff, my inverter, uh, and I got the fan uh, ordered in. So we're gonna go ahead and you know, cut a hole in the roof and get that installed once we get it all insulated. And then after that, the next thing I wanna do is kind of start our electrical system. So basically what I'm gonna do is um, we're gonna have our kitchen kind of in the front of the trailer. And so I'm gonna build cabinets, base cabinets in the front, and then I'll have uh, some cabinets up top. Inside the one base cabinet is gonna be where my uh, electrical system is gonna be. So my inverter, my batteries, the breaker box, fuse panel, everything's gonna be in there. So in order to kind of install that stuff, I need to at least get my base cabinets built. Uh, so we're probably gonna start working on that today and get all that stuff installed and then start running all our wiring. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so I've changed my mind as far as reinforcing this roof. Um, reason being is if I run two by fours across, it's basically gonna lower the ceiling clearance, you know, a couple inches at least, two or three inches um, from what it is right now. So, you know, at that point, I'm gonna have to kind of duck when I'm in here and it's already, you know, it's already to the point where it's, it just, my head just clears. So I want it to be a little bit more comfortable when I'm walking in here. And to be honest, it's not really a big deal. I mean, you can't walk on this roof or anything like that, which I don't really need to anyways. So I think we're just gonna leave it as, as it is and we're going to insulate it and then get our fan installed. So the insulation on the roof is almost done, uh, but I ran out of pieces that are big enough to finish it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda keep moving uh, and I'll later on, I'll go and get a, uh, another piece to go ahead and finish that. So the first thing we gotta do here, uh, I gotta get this thing cleaned up because I got tools everywhere and this foam insulation just makes a massive mess. So we're gonna go ahead and sweep in here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut a hole in the roof and get our fan installed.
All right, I've decided once again, we're gonna change course. I kind of made it an executive decision because it's snowing pretty bad that I don't want to cut a hole in the roof because then I can't seal it. So then it's just going to be leaking into the trailer. So we're going to wait and do that another day. Maybe tomorrow we'll see. Um, so what I want to do then is get started on building our front base cabinets. That way we can, we have a place to install all of our electrical components. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so what we're doing here is I'm cutting a dado in the back of the, uh, the sides of these cabinets. I don't have a dado blade. Normally, you know, a dado blade make it a lot easier because you can just kind of do it in one pass, but I'm gonna have to do it in several passes. And basically I'm doing it three quarter of an inch dado. That way the, the back of the cabinet will kind of sit in. Uh, I am gonna use the three quarter inch uh, board on the back instead of like a thinner board, so. That's what we're doing now. So I would definitely recommend getting a dado blade to cut dados. Because otherwise, it sucks.
so we got the first cabinet installed. Uh, I kind of set the refrigerator there because I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of how this is going to look. We're going to have all our electrical components inside of this cabinet, so our inverter, um, you know, our solar charger, our solar charge controller, uh, fuse box, breaker box, everything's going to be inside of here. I think I'm going to actually put the battery box on the outside of the trailer. I'm going to build a box and then just run the cables to the inside to kind of save some space. And then I'm going to have, I think I'm going to have the stove sitting on top of this cabinet. And then, cause it's like a, uh, kind of a, it's like a portable, it's a portable stove. That way we can take it in and out. If we want to cook on the outside of the trailer, we can do that. So it's just going to kind of sit on top of there. And then our sink is going to be on in the middle. And then I'm going to have two uh, clean water tank and a wastewater tank underneath with a pump. And then I'm going to build a cabinet to kind of house our refrigerator. And then I'll have a countertop going across. I don't know, now looking at it, I'm probably not going to have a whole lot of room for cabinets on the top. I may do like those real like slim cabinets just going across just for some extra storage. But we'll see. I don't really want to, you know, I don't want it to be to the point where you can't really work on this countertop because you have a cabinet in the way. So I'm probably just going to do some low profile cabinets or something just to have some storage. But I'll cross that bridge whenever I get there. Alright guys, so we're starting to run out of daylight here and we actually have some dinner plans tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff cleaned up and we'll catch you guys in the morning. Alright guys, so it's the next morning and I've got all of our uh, electrical system components that I ordered uh, and I also drew up a wiring diagram. This is kind of how we're going to have this thing laid out. Uh, there's a few things on here that, you know, since I drew this I might change, um, but this gives you kind of a general idea of how everything is going to be set up. Um, I'm going to have at least, I think, two solar panels on the roof. Uh, that's still kind of up in the air. Everything is going to be powered off of our batteries. So I have a battery charger uh, that I bought. It's like a smart charger. And so whenever we are at a campsite or somewhere that has shore power, we're going to, I'm basically just going to plug in my battery charger so I'll still be running off my batteries, but I'll have shore power to charge my batteries uh, as well as, you know, I'll have my solar power as well. Uh, my hope is that, you know, this can kind of be just an off-grid camper that, like, if, you know, I'd like to have enough power from my solar panels that I can pretty much just be off-grid for however long I want uh, and have enough power to, you know, kind of just keep everything running. I mean, I don't really have... We don't really have a whole lot in here. I'm gonna have a refrigerator. That's probably gonna be the biggest uh, draw on these batteries. Uh, other than that, um, I have LED lights. I bought six LED lights. Those draw very little power. I have a 12 volt water pump uh, for my sink. And I have, on here I drew out four outlets. I may do a fifth, I'm not really sure, but uh, those are just gonna be, I think I'm gonna have at least one or two uh, kind of in the kitchen area so I can you know plug in a coffee maker maybe a small microwave uh, I do have this is a 2200 watt inverter that I bought is now this is a pure sign inverter uh, you, know, you can learn a lot about I, I did a lot of research on inverters there's you can buy cheaper inverters that are like modified sine wave they're not as efficient and they're not as good as good for using uh, certain appliances like microwaves and stuff like that. Um, so I found this inverter. Uh, it had really good reviews. I actually bought this on Amazon. Uh, and I'm gonna link in the description all the stuff that I have here uh, so you guys can look it up. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, I got a fuse panel. So everything's gonna be basically run. I'm gonna have cables that go from the battery uh, through a uh, switch, like a master switch, and then that's gonna go to my power and ground bus bars, and then everything is going to, I'm gonna basically have, um, my fuse panel is gonna be hooked up to the power and my, my ground bus bars, that way I don't have a ton of wiring uh, at the battery, and then everything's gonna be ran off of that. So what we gotta do next is basically kinda of figure out how I'm gonna fit everything, how it's gonna be oriented inside of this uh, cabinet. 
Uh, we'll figure out how we're gonna kind of, you know, mount everything in here, and then we'll just start kind of figuring out how we're gonna route all of our wiring, and then we'll go from there. We got everything mounted in here the way we want it. Um, so the next step is gonna be uh, drilling our holes because uh, I'm gonna put my batteries on the outside. I'm gonna build a battery box to house those. So I'm gonna run my cables through the front of the trailer here. So I'm gonna drill uh, a two inch hole through the back of the cabinet and then also through the front of the trailer. And then I gotta get some grommets so that I can run my cables through there. And I'm going to do another two inch hole on the side here through the cabinet and then through the side for my shore power outlet. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got two circuits wired up so far. Uh, we have our uh, power and ground for our water pump. Uh, this is gonna be our, uh, the pump that'll pump water up to the spigot in our sink. I am going to add a relay to this um, because anytime you have something that draws uh, not significant current, but enough to create a lot of arcing, you want to use a relay. So. Uh, we are going to wire this up to a relay probably on the inside of this cabinet um, which we'll just use these two wires for our power or for our control and our load side of our relay and then over here I have our wires going up to our uh, vent fan so we're going to install the vent fan I think about right here so we'll run these over to our vent fan which that does not need a relay it's all built into that fan uh, you just need a power and a ground and then mm -hmm. uh, so the next step is I have six I have six LED uh, recess lights and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do three different switches so I'm gonna do like two lights kind of in the front two lights in the middle and two lights in the back all on different uh, three different switches that way you know, we can kind of control which lights we want on. And I think I'm going to do dimmer switches on those as well. So we can control the dim, the dimness on those lights. Uh, I'm not, I don't believe I'm going to do a relay on these because they're very, they're LED. So they're very low current. Um, so I'll just wire those directly from the fuse box all the way up to the lights and then to our switches. And then after that, uh, we're probably going to start wiring up our outlets so we'll work on the AC side of the of the circuit and then we'll go from there. Logie can you tell me all the colors of the wires please? What color you got? Uh, yeah. Blue. Yeah. Blue. What other colors? Yeah. Uh, I, I,
Good job. Can you count now? Yeah. Oh. One, two, three, four, four, five, six, Alright guys, so that's about all we have time for today. Uh, fortunately, we were able to get you know most of our uh, roof insulated. We got you know pretty much everything installed inside of our cabinet, uh, our inverter, our charger, uh, breaker box, fuse panel, and we got most of our 12 volt system wired up. I still have to wire up some switches for our lights. Uh, I always obviously have to get the lights installed and get our fan installed. Uh, I want to order a few things. I got to get a, a couple bus bars. I want to get a receptacle for uh, the outside of the trailer over here for hooking up to shore power. I also have to get some metal so that I can build a battery box. Uh, so we have quite a bit of things to do still uh, as far as our electrical system goes, uh, but we're definitely chipping away at it. So once again, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and we will catch you next time.